linguist Louise Banks's daughter Hannah dies at the age of 12 from an incurable illness. Twelve extraterrestrial spacecraft hover over various locations around the Earth. In response, governments worldwide send teams of military and scientific experts to monitor and study these spacecrafts. In the United States, one of these ships has landed in Montana. U.S. Army Colonel Weber is tasked with managing the response. Recognizing that understanding the aliens, he referred to as heptapods due to their seven-legged form, is a matter of linguistics as much as it is of physical science, Weber recruits linguist Louise Banks. Louise is a renowned linguistics professor who has previously helped the government with translations. She is shown to be still dealing with the death of her daughter, Hannah, who died at the age of 12 from an incurable illness, a loss that deeply affects her. In addition to Louise, Colonel Weber also recruits physicist Ian Donnelly to join the research team. Ian is a theoretical physicist who provides scientific insight into the heptapods technology, and aids in understanding the physics of the spacecrafts and the heptapods themselves. On board, Banks and Donnelly make contact with two cephalopod-like, seven-limbed aliens, whom they call heptapods. Donnelly nicknames them Abbott and Costello. Banks and Donnelly spend a significant amount of time inside the heptapods craft in Montana, attempting to decipher this complex language and establish a line of communication. They also coordinate with international teams who are working on the same task with other landed spacecraft around the world. As Banks delves deeper into understanding the heptapod language, she begins to experience vivid flashback-like visions of her daughter, Hannah. Initially, these appear to be memories brought on by the strain and intensity of her work. However, as she becomes more immersed in the heptapod language, these visions become increasingly intense and detailed. After painstaking research, they reach a point where they can construct basic phrases and ask why the aliens have arrived on Earth. The heptapods respond with a complex logogram that Louise translates as, offer weapon. The vagueness of this statement, particularly the word, weapon, causes a global crisis. The problem arises from the inherent ambiguity in translating languages, especially a completely alien one with no direct correlation to any human language. The term, weapon, could mean a physical weapon, a tool, a device, or even a metaphorical weapon like knowledge or an idea. When China, which is also interacting with one of the 12 spacecraft, interprets the statement as, use weapon, they perceive it as a threat. As a result, China breaks off communication with the heptapods and prepares for a military confrontation. This move prompts other nations, fearful of a potential global conflict, to also cut off communications, exacerbating tensions and leading the world closer to a potentially disastrous response. Louise Banks argues against this interpretation. She suggests that the symbol translated as weapon might be more accurately or abstractly understood as means or tool. She proposes that China's adversarial interpretation might be influenced by their chosen method of communication with the heptapods which was the game of mahjong. Mahjong is a competitive game, and using it as a basis for interaction could have framed their understanding of the alien's message in a competitive, potentially hostile light. Despite the strained international relations, Louise Banks and Ian Donnelly continue their work to decipher the heptapods' language and understand their intentions. A group of rogue soldiers, motivated by fear and misunderstanding, decide to take matters into their own hands. They secretly plant a bomb inside the Montana alien craft, aiming to destroy it. Unaware of the planted bomb, Banks and Donnelly re-enter the alien craft to continue their communication with the heptapods. During this interaction, the aliens give them a more complex and extensive message. Just before the bomb detonates, one of the heptapods, who have been nicknamed Abbott and Costello by Banks and Donnelly, manages to eject both linguists from the craft. The explosion throws Banks and Donnelly clear of the blast and they fall unconscious. When they wake up, they find that the alien craft has moved to a higher altitude, well beyond human reach, presumably as a precautionary measure after the explosion. Meanwhile, the US military, uncertain of whether the explosion will provoke a hostile reaction from the aliens, prepares to evacuate their personnel from the site. Dr. Ian Donnelly, the theoretical physicist, makes a crucial discovery. He finds that the symbol for time appears throughout the message they've received from the heptapods. Their unique written language, comprising complex circular symbols, or logograms, is non-linear and encapsulates entire thoughts or sentences in each logogram. Moreover, Donnelly notices that the message as it's projected in a 3D space only takes up precisely one-twelfth of the available space. This mathematical detail leads them to a new hypothesis about the aliens' intentions. Dr. Louise Banks, the linguist, 
puts forth the idea that the full message from the heptapods might be split among the 12 craft that have landed across Earth. This implies that the heptapods want the nations of the world to cooperate and share their individual parts of the message in order to understand the full communication. The spacecraft, recognizing her approach, sends down a transport pod. Banks bravely enters the pod, which then ascends and brings her back into the spacecraft. Once inside, she makes contact with the other heptapod, Costello. Despite the crisis situation, she continues her mission to understand their purpose on Earth. She learns that Abbott has been mortally injured due to the explosion. Costello communicates with Banks, expressing their peaceful intentions. It reveals that they have come to Earth to offer help to humanity, by giving them the gift of their language, which allows them to perceive time in a non-linear way. This revelation is paired with an intriguing prophecy, in 3000 years from now, the heptapods will be in need of humanity's assistance. The specifics of this future aid are not detailed, adding a sense of mystery to their mission. Dr. Louise Banks makes the pivotal realization that the so-called weapon the aliens mentioned is actually their unique non-linear language. The term weapon was a mistranslation, and what the heptapods meant was more akin to a tool. This tool, the heptapod language, has transformative implications for humans. Unlike the linear perception of time, where the past, present, and future follow a straight line, understanding the heptapod language enables one to experience time in a non-linear way, seeing future events as if they were memories. This revelation dramatically reframes Banks's experiences throughout the film. She has been having what she initially believed to be flashbacks about her daughter, Hannah. However, she now understands that these are not memories of the past, but premonitions of the future. Her daughter, whom she's been mourning throughout, is not yet born and won't be until sometime in the future. The realization is both profound and bittersweet, as these premonitions have also revealed that Hannah will suffer a fatal illness. However, this discovery about the nature of the heptapods, gift, and the potential it offers humanity revolutionizes her understanding of their mission and her role in it. Following her solo venture into the alien craft and the profound conversation with the surviving heptapod, Costello, Dr. Louise Banks returns to the military camp, which is in the process of being evacuated due to escalating global tensions. She seeks out Dr. Ian Donnelly and explains to him that the term, weapon, which they had previously translated and feared, was a misinterpretation. The correct interpretation should be, tool. The alien's language itself is this tool, which allows humans to perceive time in a non-linear way. Shortly thereafter, Louise experiences another vivid premonition of the future which have been increasing ever since she started learning the heptapods language. In this vision, she is at a United Nations event organized to celebrate global unity achieved after the alien arrival. In this event, she meets General Shong, the Chinese military leader who was about to launch an attack on the alien craft. He thanks her for calling his private number in the past and convincing him to halt the attack by reciting his wife's dying words something she could only have known through these premonitions enabled by the alien language. He then shows her his private number, which she has not yet actually received in her present timeline. Using the knowledge gained from her premonition, Dr. Louise Banks takes decisive action to prevent a global catastrophe. Shaken by the encounter, General Shong orders the Chinese military to stand down and not attack their local alien craft. They also decide to release their portion of the alien message, which they had been keeping secret due to the escalating tensions. Following China's lead, the other countries who had also taken a hostile stance towards the aliens, including Russia, Pakistan, and Sudan, reverse their decisions. They also release their parts of the alien message and order their militaries to stand down. Having achieved their mission to share their tool and ensure the future cooperation of humanity, the 12 alien spacecraft depart Earth. This brings an end to the immediate crisis, leaves humanity with a profound new understanding of time and language and sets the stage for a united response to future extraterrestrial contacts. As the military camp is being evacuated, following the decision of all the nations to stand down and the departure of the alien spacecraft, Dr. Donnelly expresses his love for Dr. Banks. Throughout the movie, they have been working closely together, facing the fear, pressure, and mystery of the alien arrival. The tension of their shared experience has brought them closer, culminating in Donnelly's confession of his feelings for Banks. They discuss what it means to be able to foresee the future, given that learning the heptapod's language has started to grant Banks visions of the future. They ponder over the philosophical question of whether one would make different life choices if they knew the future outcomes. This conversation subtly foreshadows the difficult choices and heartache that await Banks, a profound consequence of her newfound ability to perceive time differently. However, in this moment, it also serves to deepen the emotional bond between Banks and Donnelly, 